This work reveals that the mythical land of Gog and Magog really existed. I can show you where it was and where you still find it today. The Wikipedia page about Gog and Magog makes no mention, not even a tiny footnote to what I'm about to disclose. They tell you Gog Magog was briefly mentioned in the Bible and Curin by a few rabbis and writers of antiquity, but they're not sure where or even what it was. It took me only a few hours of research to pinpoint the exact location of Gog and Magog. I've introduced this pre-flood map, the Tabula Rogerina, in the video about Cairo Babylon. If we snip out the far northeastern corner of the map, we get this turned upside down so you can read it. It says, Ardujuj and Ardmajuj, Arabic for land of Gog and land of Magog. Ard is also ancient German for land. Here, it is listed as an actual location you can travel to on a map of the year 1145. The inscription here says, the beginning of the mountain range Yajuj and Majuj, or Gog and Magog. The Arabic phrase that was translated into modern German in 1928. Here, the German word for Gog is Yajuj. The text here says, belongs to the mountain range Kufiya that encloses the Gog and Magog. On the old map, Gog and Magog are defined or bordered by a mountain range. Academia says the ancient maps are mythical. But I found the exactly same mountain range where the map said it would be, in the far northeastern corner of the world. Notice the shape of the grey mountain range on the left, above the city of Yakutsk. Today this mountain range is called Virkoyansk. For comparison. The 1154 map gives us a fairly accurate shape. Not much has changed in a thousand years. But there's more. Gog and Magog are in what is today known as the Arctic northeastern part of Siberia, autonomous Yukatka, the northeastern part of Saka, and Magadan and Kamchatka. This is Russia. This is Gog and Magog. I will later show how the word Magadan derives from Magog and Chukotka derives from Gog, but let's first look at other evidence. If the places surrounding it are real, not mythical, then it stands to reason that Magog is real. Just south of the mountain range, the map shows the land of the Kemek Turks beside the larger lake. Kemek really existed. It was a medieval confederation between the Ob and Erdish rivers. That's roughly the location the ancient map tells us it is, despite the cataclysmic post-flood changes to the face of the earth. Many places still exist today. For example Dagestan, from this perspective top at the bottom of the lake, here written as Dahestan. Not far from Magog I found a country called Sijan, not to be mistaken with the town of Sijan in Armenia. We notice, most of towns, or cities, are called Herb. The German translation says, Land Sijan, un da sein dieser Storten Steed. In English, it's, the land of Sijan, and these are the destroyed cities. So, any city labeled with the word Herb, has been destroyed. This is another example of this, from the other side of the world. Here we see, the entirety of Ireland is Herob. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Those who watch my videos on the terrestrial paradise, have already learned that Gog and Magog is directly adjacent to what was once considered paradise. This, for example, is the 1436 Bianco's world map. Notice that Gog and Magog is shown as a kingdom like any other, and, like on any other ancient map, it's in the northeastern part of the world. But on the 1154 map, we don't see the terrestrial paradise. We see Island of High Ansons, is possibly a code for the same thing. In a previous video I said that this terrestrial paradise could be in Tibet, because I was speculating that drastic earth changes moved the land circling the ocean further inward. But if ancient maps did not change as drastically as I thought, then, paradise could have also been Korea, Japan, or even the Russian island of Sakhalin. Or, it could in fact be the ring compassed of all of these places. On this map, we see a ring of North Korea, South Korea, Japan, Hokkaido, Sakhalin. It's reminiscent of the terrestrial paradise ring seen across ancient maps, as well as the island of Hyacinth shown earlier. The gates to paradise would then be where we today find North Korea. 
This then, might explain why North Korea is still the most secretive closed off place on Earth. I also just now noticed that the Jewish homeland, built by the Russian government, is within where the ancient terrestrial paradise was said to be. Maybe no coincidence. Is Gog and Magog the place people went when they were expelled from paradise? I don't know. In previous videos, we've seen that places where cannibals, giants, and naked people used to live are today mostly permanently frozen. The Antarctic was such a place, and the once fertile northern Siberia too. There was a flood, then these creatures were flash frozen in ice. Here's a French map from the 1700s. In the upper right hand corner it says Pita Chukchi, country of the Chukchi. The modern word for the region, Chukaka, is derived from that. Chukchi, is derived from Juji, which we saw earlier, is the old German word for Gog. The Germans refer to Gog and Magog as Jad Juji and Ma Juji. Juji turned to Chukchi. And Chukchi turned to Chukakta. That's how the modern name of the region is the same as the old one. The modern region Magadan, then, is derived from Magog. Yes, the mythical Gog and Magog are still on maps, with the same names. Yet, we are told nobody knows where these lands were. The Wikipedia page, at the time of this video, names all kinds of possible locations, just not the correct one. In the 1700s, the area was mostly empty, as it is today, even though it had been a fertile populated kingdom hundreds of years prior. We see one city, called Anatarsko. The place still exists today as Anadursk on the river Anadar, flowing to another town at the coast, also called Anadar. Looking at Anadursk on Google Maps, I expected to find signs of ancient bombing, as elsewhere, but I found nothing, not even a town, only some evidence of amateur photoshopping at Google HQ. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 2.